What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today, sticking with the holiday theme, I got Santa Kermit the Frog. I got cute little reindeer with the lights on their antlers. Shh, this is actually coffee. Shh. And uh, you know, some homemade Christmas cookies here. I thought I'd come back to you one last time of 2018, which again, blows my mind with a video idea that you guys actually gave to me. Um, I threw out to my Instagram story what kind of top five ideas you would like to see. And one of them is top five pen and ink combinations. So these aren't necessarily my favorite pens or my favorite inks, but they're the pen and ink combo that I put together about 95% of the time. Um, so when I pick up this pen, I 95% of the time pick up the same ink and keep them together. Uh, so in no particular order, let's just jump into it. And I'm going to start with the Omas Ojiva Alba, Ogiva Alba, however you want to pronounce it. No judgment. This pen is a piston fill, um, nice broad ink, uh, broad nib, so it can handle a really unique ink. Um, it writes basically like a stub and it is very wet. And because it's very wet, I like to put Robin Roster Fire and Ice into it. The reason why I like to do that is because this ink, oh, she sheens so well. It's just beautiful, crisp blue with like red over um, the outsides of the letters. So it really sheens really well um, coming out of a really wet pen. Uh, especially if you put this on Tomoe River ink. Ink? <laughs> Maybe I've had too much coffee. Tomoe River paper. Then, ooh, it is a match made in heaven. So definitely, I love these guys. The next one is also a blue pen, but is not a blue ink. So this is the Platinum Century 3776. This is the first uh, Platinum 3776 I ever have had. Either way. <laughs> uh, it's also the first gold nib pen that I ever purchased. Uh, this is actually the fine nib, um, you know, cartridge converter. Uh, was basically my top number one pen of all time until the Aurora Optima uh, kind of kicked it out a little bit. But it's still pretty close. <clears throat> it's still, you know, 1.5. It's not even in second place. It's in 1.5 place. Um, really great pen. What do I pair this with? I pair this with an ink that I think is really underrated. Not many people talk about this ink. It can be a little bit picky. But what I really like is this guy. This is Diatramentus Cola. Um, so it's a scented ink. It supposedly smells like cola. And it does fairly close smell like cola. When you sniff it that long and that intently, it doesn't smell like Coca-Cola too much, but it does. And you can smell it while you're writing. And this is gonna sound weird or look weird, but because this is pretty much the only ink I ever put in this pen, the feed now has kind of taken on the scent of uh, this. And I've been using this for years and like it barely looks like I've put a dent uh, in this bottle. Now, if I flip it upside down, you can see the ink levels about here because it's, you know, filling the cap. But uh, I've been using this forever because these cartridges don't hold or cartridge converter don't hold a ton of ink. Um, but because this is such a fine nib, that little bit of ink goes a long way. So I really, really dig that one. And I gotta have a coffee break. Mm, so good. Okay, moving on. We're gonna pull out the Lamy 2000. This is a great, great, great pen. Um, it's great to travel with because it's solid. Uh, like I could just, oh, I could squeeze it. <laughs> it's super solid writer. Never have any issues with hard starts, skipping, smoothness, nothing. This is just a perfect writing pen. Uh, it looks beautiful, nice and classy, post, unpost, doesn't matter. Piston fill, 
Um, you can unscrew the top here and you can clean out the pen really, really easily. Um, the nib, not super flashy. It is a hooded nib, um, but I really, really dig it. And I love this. Let's, listen, listen closely. Um, really great pen, timeless pen. It's a reason this has been around forever and I really dig it. The ink that I pair with it is not a sailor ink. <laughs> so it is actually diamine, diamine, however you want to pronounce it, ancient copper. I have it in a sailor bottle because I bought it, um, the ancient copper that I bought was in the 30 milliliter um, plastic bottle. Um, and I didn't love that. Uh, it's really difficult to fill from the bottle uh, because it's not a very wide top. Um, whereas this guy here has a pretty wide uh, mouth and it does have a filling cone on the inside. Now, this is not a great bottle for like, if you're filling like a Mont Blanc or anything with like a ginormous nib, but like I previously stated, teeny tiny. So for comparison, you know, if I were to fill this guy versus this guy, I have to be able to dip this much uh, into an ink bottle versus this much into an ink bottle. So you definitely gotta pair your pens with your ink bottle, unless you're gonna decant into something bigger, uh, if you're gonna fill directly, you know, using a syringe or anything like that. There's tons of workarounds, but this uh, ink I really like. It's a very good shader. It screams fall. Um, it's beautiful, like deep, rich, reddish, orangish, brownish. Um, oh, beautiful, bellissimo. It does uh, dry out a little bit if you've had it in your pen for quite some time. Uh, so it can get a little bit crusty, just like any other ink, to be honest. Um, this one though can have the tendency to do that a little bit more if you have it in a pen that isn't completely sealed when um, like when it's capped. So just putting that out there. <laughs> All right, so we've gone through three already. This next one, I kind of cheated and I'll tell you why. This honking beast of a pen right here is the Jinhao 159. It is a massive pen, not quite on the same level as like a Delta Dolce Vita oversized, but it's pretty close in size to a Mont Blanc 149. In fact, if you got the black trim of this, it kind of steals the look, but that's not what this video is about. Um, this pen I have actually with a Goulet nib, the um, Jinhao nib that was in it, mm, it wasn't very good. Uh, it'll take any number six size nib, cartridge converter, no problem. The reason why I, I said I kind of cheated is because I don't necessarily always put the same ink in it, but I always put the same ink style into it. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee while you kind of ponder what the heck that just meant. Did you get it? I always put inks that have shimmer. So anything with glitter or any particulates that are in the ink, that is what I put in this. So any of the Gerbon, um 1670 inks, uh, the Diamine uh, Shimmertastic inks, anything with this stuff. Um, I don't wanna put that in you know, an expensive pen. You're never gonna catch me putting this in an Omos because I can't take this apart, I can't clean it. Um, these particulates get everywhere. Um, they do also tend to clog up your feeds, so they're definitely more of a temperamental uh, ink. And because it is such a temperamental ink, if for whatever reason I forget and I lose this pen and I find it six months later, I know I can take it apart and I can still clean it and it's usable. So you clean the converter like you normally would, the nib and feed are just friction fit, so I can pull the whole thing out, no problem, easy peasy, clean it out. Because the little shimmery bits, these little, you know, shimmer doodads there, get stuck in the feeds like you would not believe. So 
it's kind of a cheat, kind of not. It's not necessarily color that I put in here all the time, but it's always the shimmery guys. So if you want to call that a cheat, go ahead and call that a cheat. But for the grand finale, even though it's not in any particular order, I'm going to whip out this guy. This is Platinum's flagship pen. Uh, this is the Custom 823. It is a vacuum fill pen. So you pull the back here and this little piston rod comes out. You stick it in the bottle of ink like so and you push down until you hear that click. Uh, and then because of like the negative pressure, it sucks the ink right up the barrel and fills up most of the way. You'll get uh, a fill probably to about here um, just by like holding it in the ink, drawing, pressing, drawing, pressing. Um, there are tricks to get a full fill. Um, I have done one before. If you look at uh, the review in total that I've done on this pen, you'll, you'll see that. Um, but it's really cool. I really like this pen. It holds a ton of ink. I like the look. I think it's pretty classy, um, but it's a little bit more flashy than like something like a Lamy 2000, but it's not so bright and goddish like, you know, the, the Jinhao 159. So they all have their time and place. Um, and what I like to do is put Gerbon Lidite um, into this pen, which I'm about halfway done this bottle. The reason why I like to put this ink in with this pen is because this one is a medium nib. Um, so, and so it's a relatively wet writer. I wouldn't call it a gusher, but it's a relatively wet writer. Um, and this tends to be a slightly drier ink, but I really like the color. Um, it is supposed to look like dry tea leaves at the end of your cup kind of thing. So it gets, it gets pretty close. Um, the color is fairly accurate to that label. Um, so I like to put these two together, slightly dry ink, slightly wet, wet pen, come together to marry beautifully. Um, you can even use a pen rest if you want to, but I never have. <laughs> um, so very briefly, these are the five pens that I 95% of the time will put with these five inks. Um, question for you guys though, because I get asked this all the time. What is your favorite pen and ink combo? Um, so these are mine. What's yours? Write in the comment section down below what you think of it. Um, is there a pen that you 100% of the time always stick together? Um, is there a pen that, you know, you can't ever think about using anything other than one particular ink? Um, are you brand loyal? Are you color loyal? I don't know. Um, for the rest of my pens, I don't uh, stick, you know, to one particular ink or anything like that. I'll, I'll, I'll switch it up. For those of you that have been following my channel for quite some time, you know that I am an ink sample nut. I change my inks all of the time. Uh, I probably change my inks every few days because I get very bored of the same color over and over and over and over and over and over again. But with these five pens, um, because I usually have like, you know, anywhere from five to 10 pens inked up at a time, um, it just, seems to work out that I only ever put the one ink in it. And now because I've done it for so long, I just kind of keep doing that. Um, and because like I said, I have so many pens inked up at a time, I can kind of come and go when I get bored of that particular ink. Um, I am pretty on board with the whole like match ink color to the color of the pen. And if you notice, I've actually done that for the most part. So, you know, brown ink, brown pen, blue ink, blue pen, um, you know, it's a black pen. So technically I should be putting black ink, but I kind of hate black ink, but this is a, a dark, rich color. Um, the only one that really blows that theory out of the water is brown ink, slightly brown red ink, um, and a blue pen. So who knows there? Uh, and the yellow Jinhao kind of thing, like I said, that I'm not color dependent upon. It just, it goes with all the shimmer. So because it's the only pen that I use that for, it happens to be whichever color I'm testing. Um, but yeah, that's a really long-winded, high energy, lots of coffee. I haven't even touched my cookie yet. <sighs> Happy holidays, guys. 
feels good to be back. Like I said, drop a line in the comment section below. What do you match up? Doesn't have to be five. It does not have to be. If it's just one, two, ten, doesn't matter. Let me know. And guys, happy holidays. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.